Hello and welcome back to my second video on today's Woohoo Weekend with a group of Stampin' Up! demonstrators from the Global Share Fair group. I'm going to be demonstrating another card with the Playful Playmates designer series paper available free from Celebration and the Play Penguin Bundle. So let's get down onto the craft table and I'll share my project today. My card today features another cute penguin this time I'm going to be using the Stamparatas and I'm going to be using the designer series papers that are available free from Celebration together with the Evergreen Border Punch. We will start with a half sheet of Fresh Freesia cardstock and cut in half and scored in half as well. So this measures, the finished card will measure 14.85 centimetres by 10 centimetres or five and a half by four and a quarter inches. I'll crease that with my bone folder. For my second matte layer, I'm going to be using a piece of soft sea foam card measuring 14.3 centimetres by 10 centimetres or five and a quarter inches by four inches. Adhering that down with my Tombow. Next, I will be featuring a one of the designer series papers available free from celebration until the end of September 2021 and featuring these beautiful papers here with some lovely samples here to share with you. So if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and live in the UK or in Europe then please get in touch with me and I'll be able to help you with your purchase. So my designer series paper has been cut to 13.8 centimetres by 8 centimetres. I can't see that in the light tonight. Um, or 5 inches by 3 and a quarter inches. There are some cute critters on here. Sadly, we do have to cover them up today. So this is going to go as the sky part of my card. The top here. Like so. It's very, very bright in here today, isn't it? So bring this closer. Let me zoom the camera in a bit closer for you. Just to help. So to create my snow borders, I'm going to be using my basic borders dies. And I have the one here that looks like it could be clouds or it could be, in this case, I'm going to make it into snow banks. I could also cut a piece of the cardstock and then sponge the edge to make it look like grassy bushes. So I have a piece of scrap of card here. I'm going to bring my card back on so that you can see. One layer will be quite low, so it wants to start about there and can be up there like so. So I'll cut that one first and then I will cut one slightly bigger. To do this, I am using my mini cut and emboss machine. Now the dies can get slightly curly, so I'm going to put a piece of tape on here. And there is my snow bank. Peel off the tape very gently and then remove my die. Now the, my cardstock is a little bit wider so I'm just going to snip these off straight at the ends. And there we have my first snowbank. And I'm going to do exactly the same again with the second piece of card. But it's a beautiful machine and I do use mine for virtually all of my die cutting, apart from ones that are slightly larger and I have to use the bigger machine. And then slide along this end and remove the tape again. 
And the die will go back in its packet so I don't lose it. And there we have our two snowbanks. So bring back my card and you will see that this is the smaller one at the front here. I need to make this the same and line that up on that edge, the, the paper. I've left a small border all the way around the edges here. So that's going to be there. If you take a pencil, you can just pop a little, little mark where you want to cut the other one. Bring that up to the camera. You can see how I've just shortened that to the length of my piece of paper, but I'm still leaving this, the pale green layer around the edge there. Apologies for the light in here this evening. My floodlights are very bright and it's gone dark outside now. So that's for my lower bank and we will be placing the sentiment on here as well. And then this is my taller snow bank to go at the back. So I can cut this one to the same length and put my glasses on and I'll use that as a guide. White on white is harder to see. And then the same the other end. Now when we put the snow banks on here, we don't want them to be exactly the same pattern both ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this at a random point that will match up with this one. So if I cut that there, straight up the middle, and I'm going to swap these round the other way. Okay, so they will form a different pattern now. So the, the patterns that were going along the back were identical and now they're going to be in the front like so. So my first snowbank wants to be adhered down first. I'm going to put those two pieces up there out of the way at the moment. This snowbank is going to go down first. Now I'm going to take some of my mini Stampin' Dimensionals. So I've turned this one over and I'm going to be putting a couple of the small Stampin' Dimensionals along the middle part of our snow banks. Okay, just to give it some dimension. And then I will be placing my Tombow adhesive along the sides, along the bottom and up the other side. And take those three out. So now I'm going to stick this, not all the way to the bottom because we have a lower bank as well. So I'll line that up on this edge and then bring it over to this edge here, making sure that it's straight. So we'll use my bone folder to, poke, to push down those edges along where the wet adhesive is. And then you can see there's a little pocket behind the back here where we'll be able to put our critters. So then along the front here, this piece will do the same, leaving the little border along the bottom, and then this one will do the same as well. So I'll attach those and then come back. And there you can see my snow banks along the bottom there with the, there is a seam in the middle here, but where this snow bank goes along the back here, there are some raised pads just to allow us to tuck some of our critters and our snow banks, our trees behind there. I'm going to set my base card to one side now and we're going to create the penguin. So here I have my, my Stamparatus and I've already placed my penguin from the set onto the, the plate here and pick that up on my pl my Stamparatus plate. I'm going to secure this down with a couple of magnets and ink this one up. The Stamparatus is a, a plate is sloping away from us so I'm going to place a stamp case underneath and then the plate will remain parallel. 
and ink this up gently, taking care not to ink up my hinges. And I'm going to stamp that, press firmly. With the black, I always like to ink more than once to get a precise image. Using a stamp and a block, you wouldn't be able to do this and get the image in exactly the same place. There we go, and that's lovely and black. Now I'm going to turn this plate over and I have already placed the beak and the feet in the, pl in pl in the correct place. I'm going to zoom you in a little bit so you can see in a bit more detail. So if I bring that down for you, move it along. Just positioning that so you can see better on the camera. But here I have the beak and the feet have been placed on the image and picked up on the plate again. And I will be using this one with my Calypso Coral ink pad. And tapping that on there like so and bringing that forward. Pressing firmly, that only needs one image. So now I'm going to turn this piece of paper round this is printing in bulk. I'm turning my piece of card round and then doing another image exactly the same without allowing my magnets to touch. I think we only need one on there. So press the black one on here first and press down and then another image and press again. Okay. I'll just wipe that excess off the plate. Okay, so that's our black image. My Calypso coral for the beak and the feet exactly in place as well. The Stamparatus makes this so easy for doing multiple images. It's a perfect way. If there's a way to do it on the Stamparatus, then that's my chosen method. So I'm going to close these in and I'm going to remove this plate and lay that on top and take that out of the way. So I'll bring my penguins back and I'm going to line this up with the punch. It's penguin like so. I'm just gonna line that up. When I'm happy that the image is lined up, I will pop that out with the punch. There, he's so cute. And while I'm here, I will do the second image as well And there is the second image. So these, then I could cut these off and then carry on with that strip and make more penguins and store them in a small cello bag in my stamp case so that they're always handy for me. Next in preparation of my penguins, I'm going to use my Fresh Frasier ink pad to match my base card today. And I have mounted on the block the hat and the scarf. So I'll ink up those and stamp them both together. And again, when I have lots of these to do, these will be fussy cut. When I have a lot to do, I do them in a strip and then sit on a lap tray by the television. I'll quickly fussy cut these. If you haven't seen me fussy cut, I always hold the scissors and I move the card. So I just do the first one and then the second one I will speed up. So I like to leave a small border around the outside like the punch does for the penguin and move my card in and out of the notches on his hat. And then down the other side of the hat out a little and snip that to the end. And there is our little hat. Like so. And that is my scarf. So 
So here is a second image that I prepared earlier. The scarves will attach flat, but the hat will have a little tiny piece of stamp and dimensional on the reverse. Okay. I won't stick those on just yet. We'll sort of pop those on at the end. And these ones will be applied with a small dot of Tombow. Just a card you see It's part of you, a part of me It's creativity So they can sit there and wait and I will bring on my evergreen border punch. So I have a strip of Just Jade which is also featured on the ink here and in the papers and I'm just going to place this towards the end of the punch level with the silvery piece here and I'm just going to punch. Now I'm going to slide this along, line this up on the image underneath, keeping this edge flat along the bottom here, holding it firmly and punch again and then I will move along again lining this image up with the edge of my punch and I will take those out so. So I'm going to just snip these off for now. Plenty more there for other trees another day. And just take off these wispy pieces at the end. And there is our little row of trees. So I've brought my card back on and I have my little tree branches here. And I'm going to snip some of them into twos and some of them into singles. And made a difference and built a family. We've grown strong together, you know it's all because everybody plays a part in doing what we love. So I'm going to decide where I'm going to position my critters. Now, because I have a seam here, I'd like to position one along the bottom of my snowbanks and maybe another one just to the side here playing in the snow. Just a card you see, it's part of you, a part of me, it's creativity. You can do most anything, so just do what you love. And I think we're nearly finished. The only thing missing from here at the moment is my sentiment. I think I'm going to use a different one today. And I'm going to pop that on the side there and I'm going to pop Season's Greetings on the corner. So just get a small block. Now when you're doing this at home, you might prefer to stamp your sentiment on your snow banks either with a block or with the 
Stamparatus. I'm just going to practice this on a piece of scrap card and make sure that that's inked fully. That's fine. And then I'm going to, with a steady hand, I think this has got quite a lot going on in this corner, so I'm going to pop the greeting down this corner here. Being very brave doing this when there's foam pads underneath. But hey, that has actually worked, so I'm quite pleased with that. And there is my card, and there's my sentiment. Okay, so that's using some different colours that I did on my other card. I'll show you the other one here. I used two tones of green on this one and I put the Stamparatus and did the long sentiment there. This one I've put two penguins on. Okay, and just to finish that off, I have my Wink of Stella here and I can just add some touches of glitter to the tops of those trees. And there my, my card is finished. You might not be able to pick up the, the shimmer of the Wink of Stella on those trees. You can just about see them. Okay, and there's my finished card. Thanks again for joining us today and I hope you've enjoyed my Playful Penguins card. I'm sure the other demonstrators will be reminding you about the celebration promotion that's on during August and September. The link to my previous video for today's event using this bundle will be linked in the description below. And if this is your first time joining me, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe button to be reminded of future videos as I release them. Thanks again for joining us and I hope to see you back here again soon. Bye for now.